Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. We are just moments away from what should be an excellent matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Los Angeles Rams. Kickoff is moments away, so let's get you out to our commentator. And standing by for the call are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. On a pretty gray and hazy day here in Southern California, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Los Angeles. The City of Angels showing it can be loud and raucous. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad emerged from the tunnel. They're ready for football and ready to watch their Rams do battle with Phillip Rivers and the Los Angeles Chargers. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. First carry here for Todd Gurley. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. The starters on defense here for Los Angeles. It's real easy to talk about Thomas Davis coming back from multiple knee injuries, but he wants his play on the field to be the story. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Defense had a chance to get off the field here in the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized. The other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Goff now looks to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by Casey Hayward. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception throw. And that last one, that hurts. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now a first carry for Melvin Gordon. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. On second down now, it's Gordon. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Black 15! On third down, Rivers. Benjamin's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Give him 15 yards on that one and a Charger first down. 
They'll run on first down. Gordon, and some room to maneuver. Pass the 20. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So retract the yardage and retract the touchdown. And retract the chunk play. Big strike there to get the touchdown. Now they've got to take it back and see if they've got another one still in their arsenal. Play fake to Gordon. Now Rivers. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. That was a safety blitz by Eric Weddle. Well, free safety blitz, that can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Rivers from the gun on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys just barrels on. Looking for Cooks and it's intercepted. Picked off by Denzel Perryman. And he'll bring it back to about the five yard line. Don't throw this way. And that pick just sets him up beautifully right down near the goal line. I remember being in a defensive meeting back when I was in college, and our defense coordinator says, we're going to call this be who you are defense. D linemen, you play the run. Linebackers, be aware of anything. And secondary, you play the pass. That way, you're all set, ready for whatever they put out there. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They'll try and punch it in. Gordon. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. A three-yard touchdown run. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Jared Goff and the Rams headed back onto the field. And he'll need to find a way to shrug off the opening drive, if you can even call it a drive. One play and an interception, so he's got to forget that. I know that in today's football, we have a good number of coaches who don't look at time of possession the way that the old school guys did. But there's still a place for it. I think that on this drive, after having thrown that interception, they're going to want to eat up a little bit more clock and run some offense and give their defense a little bit of a break. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. They run. It's Gurley. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. You better be afraid of me. You better be afraid of me. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. 
It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Exactly what they needed right there, because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off, because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. On the toss, it's Gurley. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. I got deep third, deep third. Single, single. Throwing on second and 14. Golf. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 23. The last drive he threw the pick, but he's not shy. He's going downfield again there. And you can't be, because if you back off after throwing an interception, your whole game plan just goes right out the window, and it makes things easier for a defense. And you and I both know there's a quarterback in this league that's any good that doesn't throw an interception occasionally, and they usually bounce back in a big way. I've seen guys throw five and still find a way to win the game in the end. Second and ten, golf again. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Golf now to throw. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. And that one was knocked away, and I think the defenders are going to be a little upset with themselves. They made the play on the football, but that one felt like a forced pass by the quarterback. Thought he had someone open. He really wasn't. Maybe an example of having too much confidence in his receiver that no matter what, I'm going to throw it to him. And that was a play made by the defense, and it could have been a bigger one. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense and they exploited on the last time out. Let's see if they can. There goes Melvin Gordon. The 20, 10, touchdown LA. Melvin Gordon with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Chargers get the quick strike touchdown. Not a whole lot to recap on that drive. Just one play, 75 yards to the house. Yeah, it's a long way to go. And remember, rarely is it a straight line 75 yards, too. Got to have a little extra in there. So whatever the final number is, a well-deserved seat on the bench, a little oxygen if he wants it as well. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Rams offense ready for their drive here against their L.A. brethren. Their deficit is 11, 14-3, and needing to get something going here as they come up on first and 10. That's throw right side is complete here on the first play of the drive. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Back to throw, gone. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Robert Woods, former USC man, the intended target, but it'll be second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Now gone. And that's complete to Cooks. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. On first down, it's Gurley. 
Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. It's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and 10. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. They'll get this halfway home from the 8 to the 4 on a gain of 4. Todd Gurley standing by his lonesome in the backfield here. Second and goal. And he's maybe going to get this back to the 4, but that's about all. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sport. And he takes it across for a Rams touchdown. Taking it in from four yards out as his guys are back within a single score. Well, they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker, this has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe the sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Zerline good with a PAT. And that makes it a 14-10 ball game. That time, a nine-play drive. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Melvin Gordon and the Chargers ready for their next possession. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has. And that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games. Maybe we need to up that a little. Rivers throws complete to Benjamin. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It'll go as a gain of 11 at a Charger first. Play fake. Rivers. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Samson Abukum gets him for a loss of 10 yards from his linebacker spot. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Once again, they'll keep it on the ground. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. So we've reached halftime. And just like that, on we head to half number two. So the Chargers will start the second half with the lead and the football as we're underway in the third quarter. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. That throw into the arms of Allen. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Third down, Rivers. Across the formation, he's got a man, that's Allen. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The 10-yard pickup, but it's enough for a Charger first down. Ready? 
Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Rivers, he leaves to Eckler on the draw. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. To throw on third down. Rivers hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. And now following that sack, looks like we've got an injured man down there on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Here's Ty Long now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming up? Most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Only gets three yards there on the heels of the one-yard pickup. Sets up third and six. Throwing on third. Gone. This is caught. It's Cooks. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. On first down, gone. And almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Here's gone. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Credit the sack to Joey Bosa. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Derwin James with a pick, and he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. Well, there definitely was some juice on that pass. And while tight ends don't always have the same reputation for hands as wide receivers do, in this case, that ball is expected to be caught. A first throw here for the backup, Taylor. He's got Allen. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. We got this. 23 yards, the final tally. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Tackle there by Clay Matthews. They'll keep it on the ground. This time it's Gordon. Two yards the gain there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. From the gun on third down, it's Taylor. And it's complete. Henry. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 12-yard line. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. And they're not able to hook up there, incomplete. Taylor incomplete on first down, here's second and 10. Now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon. And that play goes nowhere. He's met behind the line, and a penalty flag may add insult to injury. 
So on the big tight end, hold it. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. Back now in Los Angeles. It's Charger football, and they've got the lead as well as we begin the fourth quarter. On second down, here's Taylor. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. The Chargers on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and forever. To throw again is Taylor. Oh, no, he lost the football. And now the Rams have got it going the other way. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. I know you're looking at the scoreboard clock. We're getting near the end of this game. But they were in what was really called four-minute offense. And that's practice, being taking care of the football, taking time off the clock, not giving them a chance to come back. But bottom line is, what did I say in the beginning? Taking care of the football. That didn't happen. Didn't do it. A costly turnover. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. And Gurley here fumbled it. Gurley fumbles the football. It's loose. And picked up by the Chargers. And, he, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Chargers. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a line weaving through traffic, and now he's free. He's at the 40, 20, 10, 5, and he takes it the distance across the goal line for two points. Well, partner, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field, and they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. This one fielded at the five. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Todd Gurley in the offense. They get set and trot back out there now. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case. Now this throw caught left side. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 41-yard line. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Gurley with a little bit of an opening there as he's able to get five on first down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Now Goff gets this into the hands of Brandon Cooks. And he'll go down at the 28. Seven yards there and a first down. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. Here's gone. Well, partner. Then his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Rayshon Jenkins picks it off. Accelerating and off he goes. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a Charger TD. A little bit of a backbreaker right there. You're down close, one score game, trying to push the ball down the field and score, and you throw a pick six. And sometimes you take a little bit of a gamble when you're making your throws, right? Sometimes you press it a little bit more than maybe you wanted to because you want that score so badly. In this case, it cost them. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. 
And the Rams now coming out on the field. And following the pick six, and they decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back in. They told, him, they told us they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. How about the big guy there showing some agility? He just float from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. A shotgun snap for goal. And that will be incomplete. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No pick, just incomplete that time. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Goff now looks to throw. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. From 21 yards away, as they're now just an extra point away from getting back within one score. Okay, so they got the score. Do you go for one here and save the possible two-point conversion for later? I think you do because if you go for two here and you don't get it, that's deflation. Yeah. Now you're wondering why you're even going for it. Take the easy one now and come back and try and get it later. They'll try and run it with Gurley. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offense has spent a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. There to make the tackle, Samson Abukum. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. Rivers to throw. That's coming and down he goes. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Here's Gordon. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. Here's Ty Long now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. A big kick, 50 yards that time with a return of four. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. So Goff and the Rams down by nine, a little under a minute to go. It's an extremely tall order in front of them, but they've got the ball with a first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Tried to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. And I think we'll probably see them go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores. They have to try and make something good happen. Goal. And that is incomplete. 
complete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Chargers will get the football back in excellent field position. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Los Angeles, so long, everybody.